uh, I would uh, now invite our next and uh, the next uh, keynote speaker, and that would be Mr. G. Mohan. He's the vice president of product management and the co-founder of uh, Silver Innovation Labs. And with over 32 years of experience in the industry in uh, product development and management, and he would be giving us a short presentation on IoT facility management. I give you, Mr. Mohan. Uh, I will talk about uh, IoT facility management. Uh, uh, to begin with. Let me give you a very quick introduction about our company. Uh, the name of our company is Silver Innovation Labs. Uh, the name of our company is Silver Innovation Labs. We have been providing uh, products and solutions for making spaces intelligent. Right? So what I mean by making spaces intelligent, I will explain in the next slides. Uh, first, we started with the home. Right? So we provide solutions for smart home. Okay, that is called home automation. And now we have started providing products and solutions for making facilities intelligent. Right? So this is where uh, I have come to this body I come to talk to you about. I am sure many of you would have heard about the term IoT. Right? So I don't know whether I should spend time explaining a lot about that, but let me take a couple of minutes. What is IoT? Right? IoT is the Internet of Things. Previously, people were connected to the internet to their phone, to their uh, computers or laptops, and uh, over a period of time, things started getting connected to the internet. Right? So things could be, uh, uh, let us say, uh, a remote sensor. Right? You have a device. You have a device that is uh, that needs to be monitored 24 hours. Right? But it's a remotely, uh, it's a, a device that is kept in a remote place, right? So now, how are you going to monitor this 24 parcel? So you put a sensor there, and you let this device talk to an internet server, right? Or the internet, it talks to the server, and information is saved on the server, and you have a interface through your, through either your computer or from your, uh, your phone, through which you can actually see what is happening. And you can build intelligence on the computer, on the internet, on the server of the internet, so that if something were to happen, you know, to that particular <coughs> device that you're monitoring, then you get an alert, right? You get information on your phone saying that hey, there is this, you know, this motor that you're monitoring uh, in your AHU. It's your AHU motor, and you want to make sure it's running 24 by 7. If something happens to it. Right? You are immediately notified that there is a problem. So that is what the Internet of Things is uh, all about. And uh, what is happening is that this is gaining traction over the last few years. This, this term itself was coined only a few years back. Right? And uh, uh, there was this uh, <coughs> chairman of uh, this company called Cisco. All of us know about Cisco. He said, next few years, there are going to be 40 trillion Internet devices that are going to be there. Or some Humongous number, right? So that is what really sparked this revolution, and then people have been looking at ways and means at which we can put, you know, sensors, right? Sensors and control devices at various parts of either your your uh, office or as part of your factory or even you know in your farm, right? You can you want to monitor whether the moisture level in your farm is okay or not, right? You can put sensors in your farm and you can monitor them, monitor the sensors remotely, right? So this is becoming a very hot and, uh, what shall I say, a very hot topic and a lot of people are jumping into it and coming up with devices, right? So the various aspects of this are uh, briefly shown over here. You have these uh, devices, right? I will just, uh, these are the devices that, uh, that you are monitoring. Right? It could be your uh, windmill, it could be a building, it could be an air conditioner, and so on and so forth. And they're all connected over the internet through some uh, communication means. And over and on the internet, you have the ability to analyze what is happening. Right. So that is what the cloud server is all about. Right. You can analyze what is happening. You can, uh, uh, you know, you have uh, apps on your mobile through which you can get these notifications, you can see trends, and all this one, right? So this is what the whole Internet of Things is all about. Now, 
or are we actually applying it to facility management? Right. So first, uh, we started looking at how we will actually apply Internet of Things to lighting management. Right. So you already have lights in your in your office. Now, what is it that we can actually do? What is it that we want to do? We may want to monitor the lighting to see what is on, what is off. Right. You may want to control. In a central place, you want to sit in a central place, you know, like all of you are facility managers. You want to sit in a central place and you want to know, hey, has somebody kept the light on when there is actually no usage? Right? Can I control those lights? Right? So that gives you the control interface, the centralized managing management and marketing system. Right? And uh, you can also build intelligence into the devices, you know, the IoT devices that you'll be using to control these lights. And using these IoT devices, you can schedule on and off of the lights. Right? So you can build, you can use, uh, uh, you know, based on the uh, typical uh, life cycle of the office, you can decide that these lights need to come on at this particular time. These lights can go off at a particular time, and so on and so forth. Right? So that's time-based operation. Similarly, you can have sensor-based operation. Right? If there is occupancy, I can turn on the light. Right? If there is no occupancy, then the light goes off. So those things happen through even occupancy sensors that many of us are aware of. But there is additional intelligence that we have built into this, and I will talk about that. Third thing is that you can build a rule-based system. Right? You can you can make a set of rules, and you will be the best persons to decide what those rules will be. You know? So it's difficult for me to say what those rules are, but you can actually build a set of rules through which you can decide when the lights are going to come on and when the lights are going to go on. All this can be controlled and managed through a central console. And you can also see what is happening on your app, on your phone. Right? So wherever you are, you might be at home, you might be in the office, you might be on a vacation. I'm sure none of us want to be disturbed on a vacation. But even when you're on a vacation, you can actually see what is happening. So these are some of the features of uh, uh, office lighting automation solution that we provide. I briefly spoke about them. We have the ability to do scheduling of the lights, the occupancy based controls, uh, you have rule based controls, and through this you can provide centralized control and monitoring, and it also allows you to have PC, PC maintenance and also provides you with a scalable solution. So, how do we do occupancy-based control differently? Right? All, all of you have seen occupancy sensors that you usually typically put in your uh, in the staircase or in the toilet when somebody goes in, the light, come, light comes on the moment they come out, or the moment they are still for a few seconds it goes off. Right? And that is the problem with some of these occupancy-based systems because they just go off. They just are still for a few seconds it goes off. Right? So it doesn't actually sense occupancy, it senses motion. So what we have done is we have taken normal occupancy based systems and we have added this intelligence that you can that you can see over here. Right? So uh, we have three kinds of, uh, uh, we have uh, architecture called an SOA architecture. Right? So what we mean by this is when the sensor actually detects that there is a person coming in, then all the lights go on. After a certain period of time, the light goes off. And after even a larger period set of, uh, period of time, then a further set of light goes off. So this goes from the signal to the optimal energy you know, savings. Right? So the, during, during this, uh, the signal trigger, all the lights come on. After a certain period of time, only the optimally required lights will remain. And after an even longer period of time, you will have the minimal uh, lighting, right? So that is what is the indicator, and then even you know you can have a even longer period of time after which all the lights go off. So that basically what it does is that if you were to set this in a corridor where people are walking, lights don't just go off randomly when people come in and go off, uh, come in and go out of the corridor, but if you know if the lights turn on and off in a staged manner, in a time manner, right? So this is what we call as SOI architecture. So we have uh, we have been uh, talking about this to various customers. We have deployments in a few places. 
And we would like to see whether some of you are interested in using something like this in your own establishments. Okay, so uh, I am, uh, uh, just like we have this SOI architecture, we also have scheduled uh, lighting, so I will talk more than this, that uh, as well. So climate controls and daylight harvesting uh, is another topic that, uh, another area that we have been working in. And one thing that we realized is that climate control is typically, you know, it is associated with HVAC, but it is more than that, right? It is the cooling air flow, and uh, it also depends on whether there is lighting or heat generating equipment that is there within the premises. And there may be warmth that may be coming in through your windows, right? So during the daytime, if your office is uh, during the afternoon, if, the, if you have a lot of windows on the western side, you'll have heat coming in. And when this heat comes in, then you'll have to make sure that that particular part of the office is uh, kept sort of be cool, right? So what we are uh, trying to come up with is an integrated control of the blinds and lights. Then so that will take care of the blinds, the warmth coming in from the uh, from the windows, and uh, uh, not having to expend expend too much of energy during that point of time. Right? So, if, for example, we can control the blinds, if let's say lighting is coming in from the western side in the afternoon, and you can turn off the blinds, you can uh, sorry close the blinds at that at that point of time, then you would be able to reduce the amount of air conditioning that is provided by right? So this, by integrating the blinds and light, you'll be able to get blinds and uh, lighting and HVAC, you'll be able to get the control of that. Right? Then HVAC control can be based on the time of the day and the weather. So based on sensing of uh, the temperature of the day, or based on the time of the year, or the time of the day, you can decide what the HVAC control will be. Okay? There are various other controls also. There is group based control. and uh, uh, several kind of things that I spoke about for lighting. So these are the kind of things that we are doing for HVAC control. So the overall system, right? If you take a, uh, uh, the complete uh, system for the office, that will have ways by which you can do lighting control as well as HVAC control. And the entire thing you'd be able to manage through a, through a common dashboard like this, right? So you can see on the dashboard what is the kind of temperature. Uh, you'll be able to see the kind of energy uh, uh, that is being spent at that point of time. And, you know, if you just take an example, uh, on the ground floor, you, there are a set of lights and you can decide what can be turned down and turned off. So there is a centralized control so you would know what kind of rules are kicking in from your individual um, IoT nodes that you have deployed in your office. And you will know what lights are on, what lights are off, where there is occupancy, Right? So you will have a way by which you can sit and you can monitor everything from a single place. So if you were to compare uh, the IoT-based solution with the traditional automation uh, solution, so, so what we uh, bring in is high reliability and easy usability. Right? Like I explained to you, easy usability because you have a central console through which you can actually control and monitor what is happening in your devices. You have localized control over the existing framework. So uh, what I mean by this is, our IoT nodes that we'll be deploying to control your lighting, they would all be they would all provide localized control over the lights that they uh, connect to, but they will also be providing information that can be monitored and managed from their central console. Right? We will give. Uh, rules by which you can add, you, you'll give methods by which you can add uh, rules to the system so you can uh, have uh, uh, programmable rules and therefore you can have a system that is scalable. Right? Uh, because uh, uh, all the system, all the individual nodes are uh, uh, scattered all over the premises, uh, the actual maintenance requirement for each of those devices is very low. Right? So that's what I mean by that. Uh, though, uh, you know, cloud-based support, so, you know, we, we don't need to have somebody stationed at the premises to provide support, the entire support will be provided by somebody who's sitting remotely. He can look at what is happening in the system and he can uh, monitor the system. So, this happens even from 
our perspective, perspective, not just the facility manager, but we as the solution provider, right? We can monitor what's happening in a system remotely, and if there's a problem in a system, we will be able to uh, inform you that there is a problem in your system and fix the problem as well. So instead of single point of failures, we have multiple IoT nodes. So all these nodes will give you a distributed system. And therefore, if a failure happens also, it will be only in that particular zone. Rather than, in, rather than there's something that could affect your entire system. And again, so pretty much done. So these are some of the facilities of the features of the system. I spoke about uh, uh, the SOI architecture, which gives you occupancy based control. The other one would be time of day based control. So uh, based on the time of day, you can turn various uh, lights in various parts of your office on and off. Right? I think that you might be already using and these kind of uh, systems in your facilities. So we provide uh, similar kind of uh, capabilities in our system as well. Right, so. Uh, so this uh, covers uh, what we have to do from our uh, uh, lighting as well as uh, HVAC system. The other one, uh, other uh, solution that we have is for conference room automation. All of us have seen that typically when you uh, go to a conference room and start using the system, uh, you will you will typically call your IT person because you don't know how to actually set the whole thing working. Right? You will have a projector, you will have uh, lights, you will have lines. And you'll have to turn things on and up. You'll have a uh, uh, the projection system, the screen on which the projection system actually falls. So we have actually come up with a very simple system by which there will be a smart switch, and based and using the controls on the smart switch, you can actually turn the entire system either into training mode, like I showed over there, or into meeting mode or into projection mode, and so on. Right. So basically, instead of depending on somebody else, you know, IT support person, and calling him every time to come and support you, there will be a small uh, touch panel that will be there on your, your conference room, and you can just use that to control things very easily. Right, so this is how the user interface for the conference room automation system will be like. Uh, where you can control various aspects of the conference room. Uh, very quickly, these are some of our customers uh, that we have for our uh, Home automation as well as our, uh, office automation systems. That's pretty much awesome. Thank you, Mr. Mohan, for uh, a, a very insightful presentation. And uh, I would love now uh, really love to call Mr. Ravindranath sir for the word of thanks uh, for this event. Uh, like every one of you, I come always with some interest. Every time an uh, announcement comes in our group inviting us for a session. I always look forward to it, and then each time we gain something new. And uh, thank you for all the speakers who took a valuable time to spend with us, the extent of preparation, our expertise, our willingness to share with us. Uh, yeah, the, the time, maybe two hours or whatever time we spent here, it made us feel like, uh, at least for me, I would say, uh, I felt like a student again. So it was the level of uh, uh, the preparation that you all did, the interest with which you uh, shared the knowledge to us, you know, your skill, your experience, uh, which cannot be matched, which cannot be easily got from any other classroom. I would say I was immensely benefited. I am sure many one of every one of you would have been equally benefited. Uh, I would say that every time our meeting happens here. It is a driving force of the founder, Mr. Murugeshan, who has brought all of us together. Coming together is the beginning. We have come together, we are staying together. I am sure we will work together, we will progress together with the knowledge that we gain here, the skill level that will improve because of this, which will, I am sure, will help all of us to exhibit and demonstrate in our place and enrich ourselves and enrich the workplace that you work for. Uh, Lohit, you are tremendous in terms of your uh, uh, compilation. I thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, you, uh, uh, for, for we are a group of people from various uh, field of ex work experience in terms of age, 
the one place that we represent, some are from facilities, some are from projects, some uh, from different field. And the UPS is common for all of us, for all of, all of us deal with this to a lesser or greater extent. By listening to you, we had a full glimpse of into the different components that go into UPS, the design aspect, selection aspects, efficiency aspects, energy aspects, when to change, when not to change. Thank you for sharing that wonderful experience with us. Of course, ABB, they lived up to the reputation of that company. It's a multi-billion dollar company and billion dollar experience, I would say. And Nanda Kumar, hats off to you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Sir, you did very well. There were very many things, in fact, uh, for I for one, if I can speak, lightning, it, uh, for me, I come from an industry unlike many of you, I mean, unlike many of you. And then lightning, I had a very limited knowledge, and I go back now from this session, equipping myself with uh, what I should do, what I should not do, with uh, by listening to you, sir. Thanks to you very much, sir. Thank you. Of course, uh, we all keep hearing more about Internet of Things, uh, I do not know to what extent it can be applicable to all of us in our uh, workplace, but it is not going to leave us. It is going to be with us. We have to become part of it, whether we like it or not. We have to catch up with that. Silver team, you made us aware of the potential, the technology, the advancement that internet, internet of things can take us to. And uh, thanks to you and your team for preparing us for embracing for the future, which is IoT. Thank to all of you. This team, as I see, is a team that sustains by itself. We self motivated people. We have come together. And I, like any one of you, I look forward to many such meetings. Thank you, Murugesan, sir. You have been keeping this kind of, making these sessions in many cities. I am happy to be part of a very big group. group. And uh, like every one of you, I go back benefited from each one of your sessions. Thank you all.